Return on investment uh, is the subject of this video. Um, uh, most folks refer to it as ROI, uh, but it's important to understand what ROI means. It means return on investment. It's become a, a critical metric for businesses in the last couple of decades uh, to measure the financial consequences of business investments. You'll run into this really in two places. One, if you're selling your own products, uh, it's how your potential customer might measure um, the consequences of spending money on those products and the payback over time. And also, uh, as it pertains to your own business, if you're making decisions about investments, things to buy, uh, marketing programs, anywhere you're putting money, you, um, ROI is a commonly used uh, variable to measure the potential impact or, and success or failure of those programs. So being able to speak the language of ROI and formulate an argument around return on investment uh, and also to study what a potential return on investment would be of spending money inside your own company uh, are all important uh, iterations of the concept. So we'll go through what's called basic ROI in this video and we'll probably have some peripheral videos uh, around ROI evaluations. So let's, this graph is set out to show you sort of a visual example of um, examining the magnitude and timing of the gains versus the costs of an investment. That's what ROI is doing. Uh, it may cost a little bit up front in order to set up a new computer system or to execute a marketing program or search engine advertising, something like that. But what, how is it going to pay out over time? This is a really simple graphical uh, indication where you've got negative cash flows early on um, over time, but that will eventually turn into positive cash flows based on this program. So this would be your break-even point, um, and then uh, meaning is if there's uh, positive cash flow coming in, and then over time, how does that cash flow accumulate? How does the gain relate to the expense? Uh, that's essentially what ROI is. It seems simple, but um, when you start factoring in things like risks and uncertainty, it can be somewhat complex. But that's the core concept of ROI is that I'm going to spend a little money now and, and gain something hopefully down the line. So ROI is often uh, talked about as a ratio, uh, and any ratio above zero is going to be judged as relatively successful, meaning um, if I have spent X number of dollars and I get num X number of dollars back, um, you know, that, that simple ratio is going to be an important number and way of communicating ROI to other people. Uh, and we'll, we'll show you some examples of that. Um, also, really be careful around ROI. It's easy to talk about it and make projections, but the probability of having it happen and the risk associated with actually achieving those numbers is really sort of where push comes to shove. Um, salespeople can come in and claim some ROI equation and um, what, if you can't prove it at all, that's one problem. And if it ends up being a lot lower than expected, you know, potentially that's another problem. So make sure and fast factor in risks and probabilities. That's a soft decision. There's no right answer to those things. Uh, but it's an important thing to, to keep in mind when evaluating ROI. So, Remember, potential customers will compare ROI on investments, uh, and we'll talk about comparative sales at the end of the video, but essentially what they're going to do is they're going to say, um, you know, look, I've, I've only got so much money in my budget, I've got to spend it on something, so they're going to look at, at uh, expected ROI in relation to other investments. Uh, so keep in mind that your, your potential product may be held up against other uh, potential expenditures. Also, most of these decisions are not clear-cut. They're going to involve other factors, some of which you may not understand from your customers. Um, there's going to be indirect costs, which is another concept called the total cost of ownership. They may be only paying you as the vendor 100 grand or something, uh, but they may spend another 10 or 20 grand in employees' time, uh, support costs, equipment. Um, that factors into a concept called total cost of ownership. Uh, so be wary of those indirect costs because you may be, think that your ROI is very good, or that the ROI and the investment you're about to make is very good, and it's not as great uh, once you factor in those indirect costs. So let's look at a, an example marketing program from Hasselhoff Marketing Company. Uh, they are going to, a company's going to pay them $500 to do search engine uh, optimization on their website. Uh, and they want to measure what happens after that optimization happens. So this is a great uh, example of a program that goes right. Um, you know, I spend $500 at, at this point, you know, for the next couple of months, and then I get $1,500 in, in gains uh, over time in my e-commerce e store. So the simple ROI equation here is gains minus cost over cost. Uh, that helps you form a ratio that you can then communicate to others and, and internally. 
So in this case, it would be 1,500 minus 500 over 500. So you get 1,000 over 500. So the, R, the simple ROI is about 2 on that program. Um, that's great. You're getting 2x your money back. Um, current thinking says that you should keep pumping money into this program until that ratio drops. Um, why wouldn't you? If I, could, if I would give you a dollar and you give me $2 back, I'd keep doing that forever until you stopped giving me $2 back. Uh, that's the argument. So keep pumping more money into this program until that ratio sinks. So, so let's say this is what you're selling and you go into the per, your customer and you say, oh yeah, you're going to come out about, about two. Well, this would be the real outcome. Uh, the cost, you can see the cost on the real outcome is $750 and the gain is only $1,000. So if I, if I spent $750, again, right here, to get $1,000, uh, in that case my ratio would only be 33, you know, one-third, uh, it would be 33%. Um, oh, you know, I'm sorry, one-third of one. So it's not two, it's 0.33. So I'm like, I'm okay with that. It's, it's good we made a little gain, but it's not as good. Uh, so the differences are huge here in terms of uh, how much I spent and the outcomes. So you can see why prevailing wisdom is if you have a great or a good number like this, you keep pumping money into the system to get as much back until your number sort of shrinks towards something like that. Um, now, granted, if this gets down below zero, uh, then you've got problems. Then you're spending more money than you're making. Um, now, granted, again, there may be a bunch of soft reasons why you're doing that, um, brand awareness, other things that are, are you know, not financially measurable, but that's sort of how you want to think about ROI, both in terms of how you present it to a customer and how you judge your own investments in your own company. So here's some things to keep in mind when you're talking about ROI in a sales uh, scenario. First of all, what's the actual customer value proposition? You may think you know what it is, but really you need to really talk to your customers to understand what the value to their specific company is, because that's what you need to shape the key metrics and the ROI equation around is that value proposition. It may be different for different clients. So that's important to understand. Also, keep your assumptions clear, simple, and conservative. Otherwise, no one will be able to understand it, the equation. And be conservative because you want to be closer to guessing the real outcome than you do uh, to making fantastic claims that don't come true. Um, sort of under-promise, over-deliver. Um, also, the ROI is often used in comparative sales and educational sales. So comparative sales, are, I'm going to compare you against some other expenditure, and i got to have a similar equation. Educational sales, um, you may actually have to teach them why that ROI is valuable or why that thing is valuable. They may have never seen a product that, uh, like the one that you're selling. So the bottom of all this is good customer relationships. If you have great relationships, you can have these conversations. You can learn a lot about their business and you'll get better at forming an ROI equation. If you have poor relationships, you'll never really know the truth of what's driving the sale, how much they're actually getting back, uh, what their indirect costs are, all these things that are sort of tough to track. Uh, that's the idea behind ROI though, it's return on investment. You're basically saying, how much do I have to spend in order to generate a gain, what is that ratio?